reaching lengths of up to 60 to 70 feet, and an estimated maximum weight of over 60 tons, the Megalodon is the largest known predator in Earth's history. During its time, it was considered the apex predator, always on top of the food chain and never had to fear being attacked and eaten, except by other Megalodons. Aside from other Megalodons, though, that doesn't mean it didn't have any enemies. During the time when the Meg roamed the seas, other large predators were on the prowl as well. Today, we're going to be talking about five of the biggest of the Megalodon's enemies that ever existed. If you are into fantasy booking fights between animals, number one is for you. Stay tuned to find out what animal could definitely go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, or rather fin-to-fin, tooth-to-tooth with the mighty Meg. Number five, Biogmapha Cedar. Let's start off this list with something small. Well, if you could call this animal small. Bragmapha cedar, known as the biting sperm whale, is an extinct genus of toothed whale in the sperm whale family. We know of this animal because of a single, nearly complete skeleton, which was dated to be around 14 to 15 million years old. Based on this single fossil, this mammoth of a whale is estimated to be at least 23 feet long, which is admittedly smaller than the gargantuan megalodon. But what it lacks in size it makes up for in other things. First, let's discuss its weapons. This species was first described in 1994 by paleontologist Kiyuharu Hirota and Lawrence Barnes. It had around 12 extremely strong and navel-coated teeth in each jaw, which were specifically designed to catch and hold on to slippery and struggling prey. Powering these sets of munchers was a skull 4.9 feet long. Its diet includes a variety of animals, including other smaller whales, seals, fish, cephalopods, and although no stomach remains have been found, probably small juvenile megalodons as well. Characteristics of sperm whales, it had a deep basin on the top of its skull, known as the supracranial basin. Like in the modern sperm whale, this basin probably held the spermaceti organ, and so the whale had biosonar capabilities. Scientists also believe that they traveled in pods, even hunting as a group like modern killer whales, but bigger and somewhat more terrifying. It lived during the Langian stage of Miocene, the same time when the Megalodon roamed the oceans, so encounters between the two were extremely possible. In fact, the possible meeting of the two sea monsters was reenacted in a History Channel show called Jurassic Fight Club. In that hypothetical scenario, a part of these whales encountered one hungry Megalodon. The fight was admittedly more one-sided than I'd hoped, favoring the Megalodon, of course. But while a member of the pod fell victim to the predator's massive jaws, the rest of the pod were able to escape quickly. Number 4. Ichthyosaurs Ichthyosaurs are large, dolphin-like marine reptiles that thrived during much of the Mesozoic era. They first appeared around 250 million years ago, and at least one species survived until about 90 million years ago into the late Cretaceous, giving a high probability that they swam in the same waters as the Megalodon. They evolved from a group of unidentified land reptiles that returned to the sea, in a development similar to how the mammalian land-dwelling ancestors of modern-day dolphins and whales returned to the sea millions of years later. Although reptiles, ichthyosaurs resembled both modern fish and dolphins. Their limbs had been fully transformed into flippers, which sometimes contained a very large number of digits and phalanges. At least some species possess a dorsal fin. Their heads were pointed, and the jaws often were equipped with conical teeth that could help to catch smaller prey. Some species had larger bladed teeth with which they could attack large animals, which is the reason why they are on this list in the first place. There are many species of ichthyosaurs, some small, some large, and we're going to focus on the largest of the bunch, which incidentally existed right about at the same time as the Megalodon. I'm talking about the undisputed largest marine reptile to have ever lived, the Shastasaurus, the largest of which is a whopping 69 feet long. Shastasaurus has one of the most specialized mouths of its time. It's theorized that Megalodon preyed on Shastasaurus, but probably just the smaller ones, because a full-grown 70-foot Shastasaur would definitely be more than a mouthful for one Megalodon, even without teeth. Number 3. Ramphosuchus Ramphosuchus, or the beak crocodile, is an extinct relative of the modern Gharial and the false Gharial. It inhabited what is now the Indian subcontinent in the Miocene and Pliocene. It is only known from incomplete sets of fossils, mostly teeth and skulls, but paleontologists estimate that it was one of the largest, if not the largest, crocodilian to ever live. How big was it? Well, it reached an estimated length of 50 to 60 feet, which is pretty impressive in itself. Ramphosuchus had a long, beak-like snout, hence the name, with conical, gripping teeth, 
perfectly designed to catch large, slippery fish. It was a very good swimmer and was probably able to swim at higher speeds to catch quicker prey. The extended narrow snout was barely visible in the murky rivers where it lived, and when its prey was least expecting it, it'd jump up and catch them by surprise, gripping them in its teeth and swallowing it shortly after. It had a long, strong tail designed for efficient swimming, and also had short, stout legs like all crocodilians. Like its modern-day cousin, the gharial, it had a long, narrow snout designed to catch slippery fish. It also had thick, leathery skin designed for extra protection against rivals, such as other crocs. Given all that, how does it size up against the Megalodon? Well, first, let's get this out of the way. These two marine monsters may have crossed paths, but it's highly unlikely. All crocodilians live a semi-aquatic lifestyle and don't live far from land. While it is true that certain species venture into the sea, like the saltwater crocodile, they don't do it on a regular basis. But if by some chance that a Megalodon and a Ramphosuchus duke it out, who do you think would win? Believe it or not, there are online forums dedicated to answering just that question. Most agree that the Meg would definitely come out on top, but not 100% of the time. Check the forums out if you have time. They're actually a pretty great read. And now it's time for the day's best pick. Today's best pick out of any other prehistoric animal on our list may probably have the biggest chance of winning against the Megalodon. What animal is it? Well, let's find out next with number two. Leviathan Melavili. In today's oceans, killer whales hunt other species of whales, working in packs to take down their much bigger prey. But living whales got it easy. Those that swam off the coast of Peru around 12 million years ago were hunted by a far bigger predator, a recently discovered animal with a very appropriate name, Leviathan. Leviathan Melvilli, named after the biblical sea monster and the author of Moby Dick, was a giant sperm whale that has just been discovered by Belgian scientist Oliver Lambert. At 60 feet in length, it was no bigger than the modern sperm whale, but it was clearly far more formidable. Leviathan's mouth was full of massive teeth, the largest of which were a foot long and around four inches wide. It clearly grabbed its prey with a powerful bite, inflicting deep wounds and tearing off flesh as killer whales do, but with a skull three times bigger. It was at the very top of the food chain, and it must have needed a lot of food. While modern sperm whales mainly eat squid, Oliviaton used its fearsome teeth to kill its own kind, the giant baleen whales. At the same point in prehistory, baleen whales started becoming much bigger, and they were certainly the most common large animals in the area that Oliviaton lived in. Scientists believe that Liviaton grew up to such a size to take advantage of the large prey. It is perhaps no coincidence that the biggest shark in history, the mighty Megalodon himself, also appeared at the same time in the same part of the world. It too was thought to have hunted whales and many of its teeth have also been found at Cerro Colorado. For the moment, it's hard to say if the two predators were direct competitors, since they may have swum in different parts of the Peruvian seas. But given the fact that the Meg is known to have swam in every ocean, there is still a distinct possibility that the two have clashed head-on. And if they did, Liviaton's size and teeth would definitely give the Meg a run for its money. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number 1. Mosasaurus Mosasaurus is the type genus of the Mosasaurs, an extinct group of aquatic reptiles. It lived about 82 to 66 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. Though we haven't yet found any complete specimens, most paleontologists think they were about 50 feet long, which I think is actually considerably shorter than the ones we've seen in Jurassic World. Not all Mosasaurs were giants, however. In real life, some species would have looked dwarfish beside an average American alligator. Fossil evidence suggests that Mosasaurus inhabited much of the Atlantic Ocean and the seaways adjacent to it. Continents that have recovered Mosasaurus fossils include North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Western Asia, and Antarctica. This distribution encompassed a wide range of oceanic climates, including tropical, subtropical, temperate, and subpolar climates. A very common large predator in many parts of these oceans, Mosasaurus was a dominant animal positioned at the top of the food chain. Its diet would have been able to handle virtually anything and likely preyed on bony fish, sharks, cephalopods, birds, and other marine reptiles, including sea turtles and other Mosasaurs. It likely preferred to hunt in open water near the surface. 
Mosasaurs face competition with other large predatory mosasaurs, such as Prognathodon and Tylosaurus, which are known to feed a similar prey. But did it compete with the Megalodon is the real question. Unfortunately, no. The Meg actually appeared on Earth about 40 million years after the Mosasaurus went extinct. In other words, it was a little bit late to the party. But of course, that hasn't stopped people from fantasy booking the clash between these two monsters of the deep. Both are ferocious predators of similar size, and both are armed with weapons that are definitely built for the kill. But the question remains, who would win in a fight? Who would be the winner seems pretty obvious. The Mosasaurus had a long, thin body with jaws designed more for feeding on smaller prey such as amenities and fish. While a similar length, the Megalodon had a much more robust body and huge jaws built for devouring whales and other large marine mammals. A Mosasaurus would not have been able to get its jaws around the much thicker body of the Megalodon. It would just take one catastrophic bite for the Megalodon to end the battle. In addition, the Mosasaurus body type would have been inefficient for high-speed swimming, giving the Megalodon yet another huge advantage in maneuverability. Although if we're talking about the one from Jurassic World, which I can now confirm is 89 feet long, that might be a bit different. It's stupid though. Which animal would you like to see duke it out with the Megalodon, and who do you think would win? Let us know in the comments section down below. Want to watch more videos about amazing animals? Click on any of the videos you see on your screen. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody!